Meave watched anxiously as the boats glided away, her heart pounding in her ears. All depended on this mission. The fate of her realms, perhaps all the North, the lives of her troops, and her own. Now there was naught she could do but wait. Good luck, she whispered, gazing at the fortress walls, cloaked by the dark that seemed to surround all now. The Lyrians prepared for battle, their silence absolute, in darkness, illuminated only by the pale light of the moon. Meave was restless. She paced nervously in a circular pattern, awaiting the signal they'd agreed upon. Blast, it's taking long. Much, much too long. Finally, a torch's faint glow appeared atop the towering walls. It disappeared, then glowed again, and one more time around. Meave leapt in the air, and as she did so, barely stifled a cry of utter joy. They made it. It worked. Moments later, Lyrians in the hundreds burst from the trees. Lyria! The Nilfgaardian defenders loaded their catapults and ballistae. They did so slowly, convinced the castle walls remained impenetrable. Then they heard chains grinding and clinking, and the sound sent shivers down their spines. Bewildered, they watched the main gate rise as the attacking force rushed forth. General Epdahi dispatched an elite unit to take back the winch at once. Yet he saw this was in vain and all was lost when Meave rode into the castle courtyard. Meave had begun the day known as a great warrior. Yet by night's end, legend was the cloak she wore. Her shield stopped powerful blow after blow as her blade found gaps in her foe's black armor. At first, Nilfgaardians scoured the fray in search of the queen, hoping to prove great heroes. Soon, she was their chief scourge, and they began to flee before her blade that sung their death. Retreat! Retreat! What was this extraordinary vigor that surged through Meave? Naturally, she wished to liberate her castle and realm, drive off the invaders, defeat the arrogant General Epdahi. But in that moment, above all else, she longed to fight her way through to the guardhouse and bring Gascon's party relief. Follow me! Move! Move! Meave had expected the worst. A bloodbath, piles of corpses. Yet all in the guardhouse was eerily quiet and calm. The door to the winch room lay shattered, true but this was the one sign there'd been any sort of struggle. What happened here, she thought. Cautiously, she entered, looking, searching for any trace of Gascon and his fighters. Instead, she spotted Willem, curled up in a corner, clutching his bloodied belly, his fingers not enough to stop all the holes. Meave tore off her cloak and went to stem the bleeding. Willem, Wh what happened here? My wrongs. I sought to right them. Wheezed the prince. <laughs> Please. Forgive me. <laughs> the young prince choked on this last word, did not manage to utter it, before his eyes went dull. Moments later, her men entered the room to find the queen kneeling, pounding the wall with her fists, her eyes flooded with tears. Willem lay motionless beside her, covered by her cloak. Gascon pushed his way through the other foot soldiers. He knelt beside the queen and whispered what had happened. His unit had not managed to reach the gate in time, but Willem had. Upon seeing Lyrian forces converging on the fort, the prince had rushed to the guardhouse and opened the gate himself. By the time Nilfgaardians closed it again, it was too late. The Lyrians were through. The queen rose, her fists clenched, her shoulders rigid, her knuckles white. Her face betrayed no sorrow, no despair, just rage, hot as a forge, immeasurable. Now's not the time to mourn. 
seethed Meave, struggling to stay calm. Now's the time for war, for slaughter, revenge. With victory today, we'll recover our home, return to our kin and set our blades aside at last. Yet until victory is ours, they must drink. Drink greedily of Nilfgaardian blood! The Lyrians were at the brink, near their breaking point. They'd followed me for thousands of miles, over snow-clad peaks, through forbidding swamps. They'd fought, survived countless battles at her side. And though their gazes were now weary, she knew they'd follow her into fire. You're great. The Blackclads, they've holed themselves up in the upper keep. We went to breach the wall, alas to no avail. Meave nodded, twirled her sword, then leapt upon a mount. Her eyes spoke pure determination. So we'll bloody well try again. This is the end, Epdahi. Do you hear me? I shall stick your head on a pike! I must thank you. Your fortress has superbly solid walls. Ha! Fools! I'm surrounded by fools! Archers, let it be night. Obscure the sun with arrows. Make love, not war. Nilfgaard had the upper hand, yet the black-clad spirits had suffered. They now made more use of shields than of swords. When Me finally broke through their line, they raised their arms in surrender. Rivia Castle had fallen. It was hers once more. Troke! Nein zu Wien! Meave showed her prisoners of war mercy, knowing full well they'd only followed orders. Death would be the fate of only Ardl Epdahi, the one Nilfgaardian who'd issued those commands. Alas, the general had disappeared. A prisoner revealed Epdahi had fled as soon as the Lyrians had surged towards the upper keep. He had glided down to the lower castle in a wicker basket for transporting food. Curled up beneath potato skins and other scraps, he'd scurried away not unlike a common maggot. Meave cursed her luck and leaned back against a Merlin. Dawn was yet a few hours off, but the horizon had already begun to glow blood red. The Nilfgaardian reserves now drew near, too late to prevent the castle's fall. I'll get him, muttered the Queen, more to herself than anyone else. I swear on all that's sacred, I'll catch the bastard. But now we've a pressing matter to see to, preparing the defense. That night, the war turned, with the battle for Rivia Castle as its fulcrum. Meave's great victory, not only retaking the stronghold in a single evening, but also fending off a further invading army, proved the Nilfgaardian Colossus had feet of clay. The armies of the north had united and now seemed to be on the attack everywhere. Imperial forces, while still far more numerous, lay stretched over thousands of miles. Their position was untenable, and Nilfgaard's commanders knew this. In a decisive battle, they yet stood a chance, so they gave said battle and suffered a resounding defeat. Just a few months on from that memorable night in Rivia, the Imperial army was in utter disarray. 
Aldersburg, the fortress, remained a last point of resistance. General Ep Dahi and what had survived of Army Group East had dug in there, this place, where Nilfgaard had triumphed grandly in the war's early days, would now bear witness to its impending defeat. It seems history, after all, has a sense of justice, or humor, or both. Though Meave had already reclaimed her realm, she refused to retire her sword just yet, for King Demavend had requested her aid in purging Edern of the invader. How could she refuse? She owed the king a favor, firstly. Yet she also had a burning desire to settle the score with Epdahi. Demavend's envoy and I spoke, Your Majesty. The king has Aldersburg surrounded. He awaits and won't begin the assault till you arrive. Good. I truly hate to miss it. Tell the troops to prepare. Gear and ire. Of course, Your Grace. Yes? Is there something else? Pardon my boldness, Your Grace, but... I can't help but be concerned. You don't sleep. You have the air of illness about you. Reynard, I just buried my son, who died in my arms, goddammit. Yes. Died a hero. Your Majesty, I wasn't sure Willem could ever wash away the shame. He'd betrayed his country, his mother, aligned with the fiercest of our foes. But his actions in Rivia washed away his wrongs. Willem showed himself worthy to be called your son. I don't say any of this to deepen your grief, Your Majesty. I mean merely for you to be proud of him. Do you know why Willem died? Well, he opened the gate for us, and... He died because I ignored him, neglected him. It's why he betrayed me as well. Why he was in that castle with our foe. He is worthy to be called my son. I... I just don't know if I'm worthy to be called his mother. We've talked enough. We must march on to Aldersburg. The war nears its end. What next for Reyna Dodo? Whatever you command, Your Grace. Ugh. Is something amiss, my lady? To be perfectly blunt, I've no wish to give you orders anymore. Your Grace? Would you wish me to leave? Remove me from the court? No, Reynard. I'd wish you to stay. But I'd no longer wish to be your queen alone. Do you... catch my meaning? I do, Meave. I do. It's time I attended to other matters. The Lyrian army had grown into a great serpent. So much so that riding at the column's tail, Meave could not see its head. Footmen, cavalry and archers stretched like a glistening snake between two horizons. Meave had come a long way indeed, and she felt proud. Suddenly, Meave heard angry cries and the clash of steel against steel, all at the column's front. Those ranks! To the left! Mount's left! Support the flank! Meave drew her sword, spurred her horse, and galloped forward along the line of troops. Then, through the swirling battle dust, she spotted shimmering golden suns. Normally disciplined, determined to an extreme, these Nilf guardians quickly broke rank and ran. Deserters! Leaderless, Your Grace. A scout reported. Headed south, they was, towards the frontier. Chained prisoners now sat along the dusty road. Meave stopped in front of one. He was ragged and unshaven. Flies had taken an interest in his poorly bandaged hand. Spotting the queen, he lowered his head and quivered with terror. I know you take us for savages, began Meave her gaze passing over several scraggy black clads. But fear not. We shan't flay you alive nor eat you for dinner. And when a truce is signed, you'll be sent home. Where I most sincerely hope you'll stay this time. <laughs> 
As the queen mounted her horse, she barely concealed a grimace. Her thighs were sore and chafed, her hands raw from the reins. But she bit her lip and rode on, for the prize was now very near. Meave noticed one of her scouts, a certain Corporal Larkin, halt his mount and train his gaze on the woods. Your Grace, I thought I heard something, could have sworn. A whisper, maybe, but... Mm, nothing now. It's all gone quiet. I think I might have imagined it, in fact. Imagined? Meave placed her hand on his shoulder. No one has sharper senses than you. If you claim to have heard something, it's worth a closer look. Corporal Larkin saluted, then rode past the trees. Suddenly in shadow, he keenly scanned his surroundings. Something caught his attention. He dismounted, then brushed aside ferns, exposing tracks made in the mud. Your Majesty! He shouted, quickly turning towards the road. Sound the alarm! It's squirt! An arrow whisked through the air, pierced his throat and suddenly silenced him. Then the forest came alive with cries in the elder tongue. Elves on the attack. The Scoia'tael fighters stood no chance against Meave. When the sounds of battle finally ceased, the queen, victorious, tossed aside her arrow-studded shield. She then ordered the commando's leader brought before her. She'd expected a ranter who would turn up his nose, spit in her face and cry, Death to all Dwan! But the bloodied elf before her was no arrogant firebrand. He averted his gaze, and his lips gently trembled. Youthful you look, elf. How many summers to you? Thirty? More? Twenty-seven, my lady. Twenty-seven. A wonderful age. A shame to die so young. I beg you, Renner. For mercy, I ask. If not for me, then at the least for... Mercy? You jest. You wait in ambush, come at us like bandits, and now, now you dare ask for mercy. It was no ambush. Don't play me for a fool. I know what I saw, and I'm no stranger to Warcraft. It's not you we wish to fight, Tsvere. Then who killed Corporal Larkin, hm? Werebubs? When we saw you on the high road, we fell back and hid in the wood. We wanted you to pass. Your scout's hearing, very keen. He heard something, then spotted our tracks. You must understand, we had no choice. You make excuses that don't interest me. I want him in chains, and he's to be sent to Demavend. You don't understand. He hates... Oh, I understand very well. I know his hatred for your kind, but I don't bloody care. Soon after, the Adernians took in all Meave's elven prisoners. What became of them at last is not hard to surmise. The Lyrian Corps neared Aldersburg, and it could not have been on a more idyllic day. The sun shone, birds sang, trees rustled in a light breeze. But Meave saw it as she had at the war's start. Walls illumined by a fire's glow, the cries of fleeing civilians, the stench of burning flesh. As on that day, Aldersburg was under siege. Yet this time, Eden's flags fluttered in the field, while Nilfgaard's tattered sons crowned the fort's towers. The Queen found Demoven's tent without difficulty. Made of sheets of silk edged with silver thread, it positively shone. Seems the realm's restored to a virtuous path, muttered Meave. Aha! There she is! Queen Meave, saviour of the North, the Sun Slayer. Mockery I don't appreciate. I wouldn't dare. Not my words, those. You've been painted thus in song. Master Dandelion himself wrote a ballad, The Battle for the Bridge. If you take the bard at his word, you're as fierce with a blade as any witcher. Hm. Is that jealousy I hear? To be perfectly honest, Meave, it is. For I hadn't the pluck, nor resolve. And when all the North Tucktail went to sight, you alone stepped up and bared your fangs. Let it be a lesson for the future to us all. You called out the future? 
Tell me, how's your son? Baldwin. Ah, oh, growing like a weed he is. And the spitting image of his old man. Good news all, especially given the mother's profession. She's now Countess Demaretta of Gullet, a lady of the court. Ooh, your lawful wife must be thrilled. Hard to say in truth. I've not seen her in some time. Duty keeps me away, you understand. Hmm. You work hard, I'm certain. Many a night, too. <laughs> you might say so indeed. But enough about me. As we're chirping away like two gossips in the field, do tell me, what a villain. He perished in the assault on Rivia Castle. Ah. Oh my. Fighting for which side? The right one. Demavend, the wound is fresh, the pain immense. I'd rather we not speak of it. A lesson for the future? What do you mean? My dear, this war won't change a bloody thing, you know. Nilfgaard will be Nilfgaard, the North, the North. We'll sign a truce, the black clads will turn tail towards home, but the old borders don't satisfy a soul. I'm perfectly satisfied with them, thank you. And I just wish other folk would respect them too. Oh, Neve. You're one hell of a warrior, but you're no strategist at all. Your perspective, you've got to broaden it. Nilfgaard, we cannot allow it to regain strength and spirit, else we'll face another invasion within a decade or two. Measures are required. Preventive, preemptive, whatever the learned call it. Build an army, a vast one. Wait in ambush. And when they least expect it, break their bloody spine. Just think, if we were to join forces, Enough. I don't wish to hear it. Won't even entertain the thought. I'll help you take Aldersburg, but then I'll go home, where, God's willing, I'll live to a ripe old age. As you wish. We can mount the assault at any time, but... But? My scouts report a small Nilfgaardian force approaching from the south. They've stayed off the roads. Moved only under the cover of night, escorting someone. Who? I've no notion. Could be a mage. Devilishly unpredictable, that lot. Could wreak havoc in our ranks. Either way, before we rush at the walls, we must make certain they don't reach Aldersburg at all. I shall see to it. Are you sure? You've just arrived. Must be weary after the long journey. An understatement if I ever heard one. But I wish all this to be over, quickly. Neve set out after the Nilfgaardians immediately, a cavalry escort in tow. Her unmatched scouts, who had led the army through the mountains of Mahakam and Angren swamps, quickly found the enemy's trail. This way, Your Grace. It's not far now. That very same day, Meave's force caught up to the mysterious black-clad unit. Lyrian riders surrounded the foe, forcing the Nilfgaardians to halt. All fell so quiet, the creaking of taut Lyrian bowstrings could be discerned. The common tongue. Which of you knows it? I do, your majesty. You also know who you deal with, I see. What is your name? Kaldvin, your majesty. At last. An Ilfgaardian name I can pronounce. So, Kaldwin. It seems this war will reach its end in two days' time at the most. It would be silly to die today, wouldn't you agree? It would, my lady. Precisely. I've spilled enough blood. I've lost the appetite for more. So, provided you don't give me a good reason to kill you, you'll walk away with your lives. Now tell me. You carry something for General Epdahi. What is it? A letter. Urgent to the point of insanity, it must be. Who wrote it? The dear Madame Epdahi? No, Your Majesty. The Emperor. My, my. A letter from Amir himself. You must be an important person. A noble, or... 
<sighs> Yet your uniform is simple, with no discernible distinctions. Who are you truly, Coldwyn? A spy? A simple messenger, your majesty. Don't lie. I know messengers, how they travel. Alone, armorless, atop a swift steed. You're escorted by cavalry of the heavy sort. For I often carry orders the recipients don't wish to perform, thus the escort. Give me the letter. I've sworn to deliver it to General Epdahi, or to die in the quest to do so. Oh, very well. My translator shall read this letter, then return it to you. You shall break no vow, and who knows, you might even survive. And if I refuse? Guess. So be it. I accept your offer. Meave's translator cracked the seal and read. And as he read, his eyes grew wide as saucers. Then he whispered in the Queen's ear. Truly, and you're certain you're not mistaken. The wonders of this world. Coldwyn, consider this your lucky day. I allow you to complete your mission with one proviso. And that is? That when you hand him the letter, you will give the General my regards. As Caldwin and Escort set off towards Aldersburg, the Lyrian soldiers looked at their Queen with disbelief. To leave a Nilfgaardian to fulfill a secretive task. Meave failed to stifle a rather mean laugh. They'll understand tomorrow, she thought. General Epdahi had prefaced Lyria's and Rivia's invasion with a series of arrogant demands. The Nilfgaardian had been impudent, as he had felt sure he'd achieve a quick and decisive victory. Yet several months on, he too received an ultimatum. One signed by Emperor Emir Var Emreis himself. The missive was concise and left no room for interpretation. With General Epdahi dead, the Nilfgaardian army descended into chaos. The kings of the north, united, took advantage and struck at the foe. Their victory was complete. The Nordling forces cheered their commanders and monarchs, but for none so vehemently as the one queen among them. Many dream of achieving the impossible. Meave had done it. Through wit, determination and boldness, she had thwarted the Nilfgaardian invasion. The Queen would rule for many more years. Stern, yet ever just. Ha! Ah, so alas saved the North from the Black Clans. That is one way to put it. Well, I'll be damned. And a chap, she find herself one in the end? Leave it be, bloke's been spinning the tail all night. Story's done. Time we got some shut eye. Yes. Particularly as we've yet a long road before us. Phew. Throat must be parched as old leather after all that. <laughs> Except, uh, I'm itching to know what happened to the lot of them. Raynard, Gascon. Ah. Oh. Very well. Whom shall we start with? Villem? A pawn? A tool in others' hands. Most, if not all, had seen him thus. Yet in the end, he proved his worth soundly. Though he'd started the war a traitor, he perished in the fray a hero. And would be remembered as such. Having settled in Rivia, Gascon embarked on a life worthy of his new title. In doublet and ruff, he looked to his ample fields and livestock in daytime, attended banquets and feasts come the eve. And then one night, he grabbed his bow and quiver, saddled his favorite mount, and disappeared without a trace. Though Nilfgaard owed its defeat chiefly to Meave, in the Empire her name was uttered with utmost respect. Returning soldiers spoke in awed tones of her courage and generosity, referring to her as Gvedin, the tenacious one. Once the Scoia'tael had withdrawn from the Northern Realms, non-rebel elves and dwarves emerged from the woods. Though they returned to their homes in human communities, they lived in fear of their neighbors, 
aware that the next massacre would eventually come. And Meave? As I said, she ruled with an iron hand, not fist. Reynard, ever at her side, tempering, supportive. No longer a general and trusted advisor, he had to the Queen become something more. Much, much more. And now, if you'd allow me... Of course. Leave him be, lads. Let him get some rest. Till the time comes for the next tale. <laughs>